Hey everyone, in today's video, we're going to rebuild this 4L60E transmission. Now there's a lot of content out there already on rebuilding this very specific transmission, so I'm not going to show too much of what I'm doing because there's lots of people that have already done it, like Southpaw Auto Works, you've got Precision Transmissions, and you've got Transmission Bench. I actually bought a kit from Transmission Bench. Jimmy over there, I called him, he uh, told me what I should get, and uh, we're going to do a full rebuild on this, and uh, with his instructions, it's going to be hopefully pretty smooth. Just a quick tour of what's going on here. We've got uh, kind of making do of what we've got here. Um, I got a table that's going to be used for putting all these parts on it. Uh, so far, I've got the torque converter removed, which is, you know, not hard. I've got the extension housing removed, and we're actually going to be changing the output shaft on this to that of a two-wheel drive, because this was originally a four-wheel drive transmission. So that's going to be good. And uh, so far, we're off to a very strong start. We've got the uh, bracket here for the uh, shift cable, I think. And uh, well, I've already broken an easy out and stripped out one bolt because it was rusted to heck. And uh, I think I'm going to have to break out the welder to get those out, so that's about where we're at with that. Stay tuned for more. Okay, well, the first one uh, almost worked, but uh, we'll at least be able to get this off, and then the second one, well, I didn't weld it very well, so maybe this time it'll work. We'll see. We're using the big gun. Let's see if it'll come off. Alright, got this off. Quick note on the uh, bell housing bolts. They are Torx Plus 50. You must use a TP50 bolt. Your normal T50 is not going to work. And uh, the transmission bench video advises that you take these out by hand. And uh, sorry Jimmy, you must be made of uh, monster strength or something because these things were dang tight. I needed to use my half inch impact carefully of course to uh, get them out. I even needed to use the torch to get uh, two of them out because they were not wanting to come out. Alright, I think it's time to get the pan off and start playing around with the valve body. I swear every time I go to record there's an airplane going over. But uh, here we are so far. Got the filter out, uh, pan off, got the uh, servo spring or servo clip out but uh, cannot get the servo out. So. That'll be fun. Um, inside of the pan looks quite nice actually uh, for a 200,000 mile transmission. It's definitely been serviced at least once over its lifetime and I don't think they put these rubber gaskets on from the factory. I think they used a cork gasket. I'm not sure about that though, but I think that's what happened. Um, so we're just going to keep going. We're going to get this valve body off, undo the wire harness, pillow switch, um, all that good stuff. And eventually we'll get the pump out and we'll get to the good stuff. Alright, got the valve body about ready to come off. I've got my laptop here with Jimmy's excellent instructions. Thank you, Jimmy. Really appreciate the product you've got here. Um, wire harness is out. Gonna need two hands for this. There it is. The valve body. And so we've got our check balls here. We've got all seven of them, so that's good. There's the thingy that... Uh, your shift cable drives, and then here's the thingy it's attached to. Kind of cool. Alright, so an update. We're getting closer and closer to the end here. We've got the uh, back part assembly in there still left. You know, valve body's all out. Got all these parts laying here. Got my box O bolts. The only thing that's giving me a lot of trouble is the uh, one to two servo or overdrive. I don't know the place you put the Corvette servo part and uh, yeah this thing I got the snap ring out but it will not budge you can see I've tried a pipe wrench vice grips hammers you know just about everything tried heating it up too it's supposed to come out like that it's uh, not coming out so we'll see what happens there this is a pretty clean transmission though all the parts that I've removed so far look pretty good this is a known failure point and, uh, uh, the gear is still there. Alright, good news. I have finished lesson one of the transmission bench video tutorials on how to rebuild the 4L60E. 
I've got an empty case right here with the exception of this stupid piece of crap uh, servo cover. Um, got everything out on the bench looking nice and neat. There's Jim. Thanks Jim. Really appreciate the work you've put into this. Now uh, I guess it's time to start rebuilding it. I need a good night's sleep and a beer first in the opposite order. Okay, what you see here took, I don't know, maybe five hours of my time. Um, this horrible design, it, it would not come out. And uh, people have run into this before, so I'll, I'll show you what I ended up doing. Eventually, what I ended up doing was, you know, placing vice grips on here. You can see all the scratches from stuff. So once the vice grips were on, I took a mini pry bar and put it under here and just went like that. Over and over and over again. See, so you're kind of treating it like a slide hammer. You're trying to push right there. You know, get your force right there. And then you're going off of like, I don't know, the case edge, this edge. And then finally, I was able to break it loose with a pipe wrench that's like longer than the entire case of the transmission. So now, finally, I'm able to get this O-ring and uh, we'll be able to remove this servo. I might just post this as a separate video to help other people because this absolutely sucked. All right, it is out. Shout out to my Harbor Freight vice grips. The uh, release pin broke. And uh, these things are not supposed to be so bent apart. So now if you want to undo this thing, you gotta take your pry bar, shove it in there like that. And that's how you'll get it apart. Okay, finally, we can actually move on to uh, building the transmission. You know, up until this point for this project, Really, it's been nothing but taking stuff apart. So, it's about dang time something actually gets built. I always say, anybody can take stuff apart, not many people can put it back together. So, what you see here is an automatic transmission. I'm making my way through the kit here. I was just getting out the uh, input reverse clutches. I got the steels here. And then I've got the actual clutches soaking in transmission fluid so they can, you know, work well. This snap ring here, this holds the uh, input drum spring cage in place. Like if you push down here, if you go far enough, there's a groove for a snap ring. This snap ring. And, uh, well, take a minute and look at the shape of that snap ring. Does that look uh, circular to you? No, it's because I had a lot of trouble getting it out and I damaged it. So now I got to get one of those. So now I'm moving on to uh, the reverse input drum. And this should be um, doable tonight, hopefully. But there is another snap ring. And then the actual transmission is over here. I've got my protective cardboard on it. Case is nice and clean. We've got... Uh, some stuff in here. I mean, you know, it's coming together. Spins nice. That didn't used to be in there. That's the first thing I've assembled for this project, really. So, I've got the pump taken apart right here. We've got some valves and things that are going to get uh, reinstalled soon. The other part of the pump is right here. I've got the veins installed. Now this thing goes kind of like, you know, spinny spin. And it uh, pumps the fluid. You can kind of see the fluid on the edges of those veins. It's essentially how the pump works. It's kind of cool because it's all metal on metal, but it, you know, lasts. And then uh, we've got reverse input drum. I think that's what that's called. We've got input drum here. It's got all the 3-4 clutch and stuff in there. And then down here I've got the case, which is, you know, partially assembled. This video isn't really what I thought it was going to be. Um, well, I guess I saw this coming, but 
it's kind of hard to focus on this. There's just a lot of steps, a lot of things, and I haven't done it before, so it's difficult to make a video in that situation. Making further progress on this, I finally got the output shaft snap ring in. You probably can't see it unless you know what you're looking for, but it is in there. And I've got the pump rebuilt. Go spinny spin like that. They all spin independently of one another. There's clutches in both of these. And then when I turn the output shaft, it's kind of fun to watch. So I'll just show you that. Look at all that. Got your planetary gear set being a planetary gear set. The uh, drive shell goes the opposite way. I'll bet you if I turn the ring gear. Yeah. And the whole thing goes. And it only goes one way because my sprag is okay. So, cool stuff. Next up, we're going to basically put this in there. And then it's going to be on to the valve body and changing out all that stuff. I know this is a bit of a sudden jump in the video, but here it is, everyone. This here is a fully rebuilt 4L60E transmission, and I did it myself. Well, I had a lot of help from Transmission Bench, but in terms of the actual work, I did it myself. We've got a brand new extension housing and output shaft because it used to be a four-wheel drive. I've got the old one right there. That's for sale, by the way. Anybody need a four-wheel drive output shaft? And that's why it's a little bit different color because I think this has been painted by whoever sold it. And this is my original case. You know, bell housing looks a little bit different too. I did my best to clean them, but this is what it looks like. On the other side here, we've got our brand new speed sensor. We've got our connector nice and clean. We've got a Corvette servo installed. We've got new uh, cooler lines, uh, cooler line fittings or whatever. And uh, over here, we've got a uh, 1800 to 2200 stall converter from Monster Transmission. So. That's what's going to go on the transmission once it's in the car. And that'll make it uh, a little bit more fun to drive, I think, especially with the uh, 288 that this thing has in the back. So, we'll see. And of course, we got some old parts here. We've got old 3 4 and forward clutch. We've got an old drive shell. We've got an old planetary, a sun gear, and a reaction shaft that's got a sun gear basically stuck to it. And then, uh, there's an accumulator piston that's plastic. We've got one in the transmission that's metal now. No more plastic um, accumulator pistons in this transmission anymore. It's been upgraded with the Transco shift kit as well. And uh, it's going to be hopefully pretty good. I hope I did everything correctly. So as you can see, it's basically uh, chaos in this garage right now. And... Uh, well, that's because this has been the only thing I've been able to work on for the past uh, about five weeks here. Um, I had the option to buy a built transmission for, you know, like 1500 bucks or something and just sell my old transmission as like a working core and uh, get off easy that way and not have to do all this work. But, you know, I like to challenge myself here and there and I like to learn new things, so I thought that taking on a rebuild of this 4L60E would be a cool experience. And uh, it was, I guess, but it was uh, kind of painful at times and this video isn't really what I'd like it to be because uh, I ran into quite a few roadblocks and made quite a few mistakes and uh, at times the uh, this transmission got the best of my temper here and there so no one needs to see that on camera I can keep that uh, to myself and just tell you about it like right now if you're thinking of rebuilding your 4L60E or your own transmission uh, I highly recommend doing it the way I did which is buying a kit from Transmission Bench uh, I'm giving a big endorsement to Jimmy over there. He didn't ask me to talk about his kit or his channel or anything. I'm just really thrilled with the instruction he gave in his videos and the parts he sold me. I thought it was priced extremely reasonably. And the number one reason I think you should buy a kit from Jimmy is you can send him an email and ask him any questions you might have, which I did quite a few times. And I actually ended up buying additional parts from him like when I made mistakes. You know, for example, 
this reaction shaft here and the sun gear are supposed to turn independently of one another but when I tried to replace the bushing on the sun gear I uh, you know thought by hammering it onto this reaction shaft it would make it better but uh, no nah, I just made one part and that's not okay and the reason that happened is because I don't have a bushing driver or a hydraulic press or you know the proper tool to do this um, I think that would be my one major critique of Jimmy's approach to rebuilding this transmission. And I understand where he's coming from. He's trying to say that you can do this at home. You don't need super special tools. And that's true. He does it in the videos. But I happen to be very bad at removing bushings with a screwdriver and putting them back in with just like a block of wood or a an engine valve or a socket, I'm just really bad at it. And failures to do that properly cost me a lot of time, quite a bit of headache, and uh, you know, I'd, I'd almost say I, I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you've got a hydraulic press and a lathe that you can use to turn uh, you know, pipe or whatever to get the correct diameter piece of metal to drive a bushing out and drive a new one in properly. Um, that's probably my biggest critique. And you can get presses pretty cheap these days. You can get them at Harbor Freight, and you don't need to have a really nice heavy one. You know, these bushings are very light, soft metal, and they fit, you know, just tight enough to where your smallest hydraulic press can probably take on the bushing replacement. Also, snap rings are terrible. They're very difficult to work with, and as you saw, I had a really hard time with the one to the point where I damaged it and I had to put everything on hold until I could get that new snap ring. That's the other part I bought from Jimmy. He's got access to every part you need for this transmission and that's kind of the beauty of rebuilding this one in particular is it's one of the most popular transmissions ever. Every part for this transmission is available. You can get anything no matter what happens. So like if you break something, no big deal. The parts are pretty cheap. You can just get one. I haven't done the math yet at the time of recording this video but I will put a little graphic at the bottom here showing how much I spent on the kit, parts, tools, uh, parts that I broke, and I'll stack that up to what it would have cost me to get a built transmission from Monster Transmission that would have been, you know, done correctly by professionals, you know, whatever. Um, not saying this was done incorrectly, it's just, you know, I, I don't know if this is going to work until I start that car. And that's not going to be for a little while, so... Till then, this is what I've got. I saved some money, but was it worth it? That's for you to decide. So, what's next? Well, behind me is that uh, LS motor. Next video is going to be on taking apart that engine. We're going to clean up the paint. We're going to replace the uh, camshaft, the lifters, probably look at new push rods. And we're going to talk about the accessory drive and the intake and what that's going to mean for getting it into the Jaguar XJS. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope the next videos are a little bit better, a little bit more informative, and I will see you in the next one.